That whistleblower lawsuit to another case. This one is on the state level. Today and tomorrow, two state game wardens are appealing their suspensions before the state's personnel cabinet. Kentucky Fish and Wildlife punished them for their handling of an investigation almost three years earlier. However, the conservation officers argue their suspensions really stem from calling out alleged abuse of power at the top of the agency. It's a case the I team's John Charlton has been looking into for the better part of a year. John's here now to expose what you have learned, John. Well, Derek, as you know, this case, the situation had several layers to it. It started out as what some might seem uh, might call a minor issue of hunters being prevented from hunting because a homeowner threw out bait. The investigating conservation officer determined that the man did it on purpose. That man, however, happens to be the head of the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife Commission. The officer wouldn't let it go, and neither would his fraternal order of police lodge, which argued no one should be above the law. That's when the suspensions soon followed. Andy Ingram is a hunter, and over this hill, is pretty much a sure shot. Yeah, this is a really, really good spot for waterfowl. Really good spot. From the banks of Elkhorn Creek in Frankfort. I ran over in here. Ingram can shoot Canada geese from the end of November to mid-February. A little shallow and kind of holds a little pocket right up in here. And for four days in November, as well as for most of December and January. It doesn't run very fast up in here and they like that. His favorite game. Pretty reliable spot right here. Ducks. There's your duck. They flock here while hunters are scarce. We're the only one that hunts in this in, over here. Because the Elkhorn campground gives him permission. We kind of hunt right on the edge of the bank right in here. And there's houses on the other side of Elkhorn Creek. One house, this house on the hill. That's our commissioner of our Fish and Wildlife Department. Belongs to a hunter himself. Everything about it's wrong. And as chairman of the Kentucky Fish and Wildlife Commission, Jimmy Bevins is supposed to support legit hunters. There was a baiting situation in the, in the area. Not to run them off. The corn was located on the opposite side of the creek over there, maybe 20 yards from there, and he went all the way up the creek line. A long stretch of cracked corn laid down along the creek. In the water and on the bank itself on the rocks. Bevins admitted he put out the corn. That was just to prevent us from hunting is all that was thrown out for. But did he do so just to feed the ducks or really to intentionally create a baited area? For answers, we need to roll back to the very cold morning of January 8th of last year. Y'all had me look. When conservation officer Josh Robinson approached Ingram and his friends inspecting their rifles and telling them they couldn't hunt there anymore because it's federally illegal to hunt waterfowl in an area with bait out. However, Kentucky law also states that no one can intentionally obstruct a person's right to lawfully hunt, trap, or fish. Officer Robinson suspected Bevins did just that with corn after he complained to Robinson's superiors, including in this text, that the hunters were shooting too close to his and other homes in the neighborhood. Robinson's suspicions were clear in follow-up texts to his sergeant. On top of that, he noted in the case file that months earlier, Bevins actually told him that he was going to put out corn to stop the hunters from hunting. Hey, how's it going? Good, how you doing, sir? So Robinson and a partner talked to several neighbors, trying to verify Bevins's other claims that his neighbors also complained. First I've heard of it, I didn't complain. About the duck hunters. Does it bother you all? Do you all ever, does it wake you up or? Robinson planned to cite Bevins, but wanted to run it by his captain, Richard Skaggs, first. And I'll show you the daggone text. Yeah, I sent it to you. Returning to Elkhorn Creek, Robinson secretly recorded his conversation with Captain Skaggs. You feel like you, you're going to get attacked. I felt like it was coming. Throughout the recording, which is part of the investigative case file, Skaggs repeatedly warned Robinson that there was no case. I know who threw it out up here and down that bank. He did. But that's on his property. Actually, it wasn't on his property, as Robinson pointed out. If it, it ain't your land, I mean, it can't be curtilage if it ain't your land. Public records show that Bevins' property did not extend to the banks. However, it does now. The I-team found that more than a year after the incident, last February, the Fish and Wildlife Commission chair bought the land and a lot more, almost three more acres extending out into the creek.
there's been a, a major attempt to derail this thing. Robinson even took the case to headquarters, up the chain of command. So I did talk to Jimmy Bevins. To the colonel, Rodney Coffey. He agreed that he would quit feeding prior to foul seasons. Coffey called the case against Bevins a stretch and that it wouldn't hold up in court. Let's face it, uh, it is what it is, but this is the chairman of the board. It doesn't matter. Well, it does on, on how, how we move forward. It absolutely it does. Moving forward, Robinson decided to cite Bevins. While Coffee declined comment to us, Bevins responded with this letter from his lawyer. As attorney Charles Jones pointed out, a judge did dismiss the charge against Bevins with prejudice, but left out the fact that it would happen in 90 days as long as the commissioner agreed to pay court costs, did not obstruct hunting, and obeyed the laws on feeding wildlife. Meanwhile, we received this strange piece of mail. No return address, no idea who it came from. However, the type statements criticize leadership for the KCOA, the Kentucky Conservation Officers Association, FOP Lodge 100. That letter came to us after a membership email detailing the case against Bevins while raising suspicions of interference by commanding officers. Just days after the email, Kentucky Fish and Wildlife suspended KCOA President Rodney Milburn and demoted him from sergeant to officer. The department also suspended the secretary, Officer Thomas Blackwell, both punished for their handling of a poaching case. So it wasn't during gun season whenever you shot it? No. Way and back in November 2015. Yeah. Very fishy it? right here. That's a full two years. prior to the suspensions. It was a case a judge later dismissed on the grounds of an illegal search and seizure, but one that had not resulted in any disciplinary action against Milburn and Blackwell back then. If this is not corruption, I don't know what is. And both officers Milburn and Blackwell served their suspensions and are back to work, but again, they want their records cleared and they want to be reimbursed for their lost wages. That's why there's now a lawsuit filed against their department tonight for 11 at 11 in part two. We'll take a closer look at the circumstances of their suspensions and the arguments made in their lawsuit, which basically spell out why they believe things just don't add up. One of the biggest things that uh, stands out to us is the timing of their suspensions more than yeah. two years after that incident that they were already cleared from. Well, they were cleared, supposedly, there was no, after it was adjudicated in the courts with the poaching case, there was no reprimands after that. Two years later, they get suspended for that, that case. So the timing, you know, as, as they argue, just, it just doesn't, doesn't add up. up. All right, and they want their records clear. Yep. All right, John, thank you very much.